Brothers and sisters, peace be with you. I'm Hua Qi. Thank the Lord. It is time to read the Bible again. We'll continue with Matthew chapter 4. Today we'll begin with verse 17. Yesterday we read that Jesus officially started his public ministry. Although he was baptized by John the Baptist one year before, anointed by the Holy Spirit, and accredited by God Father, he was still waiting patiently for God's time. He waited till after his precursor John the Baptist was imprisoned, then he started his ministry on earth. The book of Matthew was mainly to introduce Jesus as the Messiah and King. Therefore, Matthew did not record the one year since the baptism to John's imprisonment. Matthew not only wrote about Jesus' patient waiting, but also the fact that when he started his public ministry, it was done at a place of God's choosing. Galilee of the Gentiles was a place of public disdain, even according to prophet Isaiah several hundred years before. The people there lived in darkness and suffered in the land of the shadow of death. Jesus started his public ministry on earth in Capernaum, uh, Capernaum per God's will. His message was, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. His message was exactly the same as when John the Pap- Baptism preached. The Jews at that time was under the rule of the Roman Empire. They were all looking forward to the sooner arrival of the Messiah, as prophesied by the prophets in the Old Testament. When Jesus started his ministry, his message was that the kingdom of heaven was near. The kingdom of heaven was different from the kingdom on earth. So people had to put aside the laws they abided by in the Old Testament and also put aside the compromises made with the political world for the sake of survival. All these were things from kingdom on earth. Jesus brought about a brand new beginning that was the kingdom of heaven. When kingdom of heaven was near, the first change people needed to make was to repent, the change of state of mind. Dear brothers and sisters, actually the message God gave to his church was the same today. The kingdom of heaven was near. In today's church life, how much of a reality from kingdom of heaven was there? This is what God is concerned about. Just like the Jews back then yearning for the coming of the kingdom of Messiah so that their lives could be changed, many Christians today are also interested in active participation in politics so as to change their lives. But we must realize that all these are things in the kingdom on earth. God's concern is how much of a reality for kingdom of heaven Kingdom of heaven could only be brought on to earth upon Jesus' second coming. Jesus officially started his public ministry. Verse 18. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, uh, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. The first step Jesus took when he started his ministry was to call disciples. Here Matthew made a special introduction of four disciples who followed Jesus, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Jesus was preaching beside the Sea of Galilee. As he was walking, he saw two brothers, Peter and Andrew. As we mentioned yesterday, these two brothers had met Jesus 
one year before. This was recorded in the Book of John, chapter one, verses thirty-five to forty-two. Andrew was originally the disciple of John the Baptist. He was introduced to Jesus by John the Baptist. He brought his elder brother Simon to Jesus. Jesus changed Simon's name to Cephas, which was translated as Peter, meaning stone. During that period, Jesus' ministry was done secretly. The job he did was spreading seeds. The two brothers lived with Jesus for several months. Later on, they went back to their hometown, the Sea of Galilee, as their trade was fishermen. They picked up their old trade of fishing. The words Jesus said to them while they were together became seeds of life, which sprouted and rooted in their hearts. About one year went by, when Jesus officially started his ministry. The first thing he did was to go and look for Peter and Simon. At that time, they were casting a net into the lake. Jesus said to them, "Come, follow me." Thereby, Jesus called them formally, and I will make you fishers of men. Now that kingdom of heaven was near, you were no longer fishermen on earth. You were going to cast nets of the gospel to save those who were lost, and I will make you fishers of men. Verse twenty. At once they left their nets and followed him. Here we saw a principle Jesus followed at his ministry. One year ago, he first paved the way of life. He did not have any kinds of demands for these two brothers. After they left Jesus, went back to their hometown and picked up their old trade, they were digesting the words from Jesus while working, and at the same time polishing their skills. Until one day when Jesus called them, then they had to make a decision: should they continue with their trade as fishermen? Or should they lay down the fishing nets and follow Jesus' calling? Dear brothers and sisters, today God follows the same principle of ministry. We spread the gospels and secured life from God, from God. This life is able to grow slowly inside of us, till one day when God calls upon us, then we can leave everything behind and follow Jesus. We then will be at the service of our God, with the skills we have learned and accumulated from our workplace. Peter was a good fish fisherman, good at casting nets, so Jesus made him fishers of men. History proved it correct. In Acts chapter two, verses fourteen to thirty-six, on the Pentecost after Jesus' resurrection from death. Peter was preaching his first message in Jerusalem. That message was a net he cast to the Jews. The message pierced through the hearts of the Jewish people, so that three thousand people were saved at once. The door of gospel was opened to the Jews. In Acts chapter ten, verses thirty-four to forty-three. Peter went to preach to the Gentiles. He came to the home of Cornelius and preached a message. This was God casting nets to the Gentiles through Peter. The door of gospel was opened to the Gentiles. Peter had a clear understanding of his ministry through Jesus' calling, so he left everything behind and followed Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters, when God calls you, are you ready for it? Continuing to verse twenty-one. Going from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat. 
and their father and followed him. After calling Peter and Andrew, Jesus continued walking forward and saw brothers James and John. John and Andrew were initial followers of John the Baptist. At the introduction of John the Baptist, John met Jesus, and this was one year prior. These two brothers, like Peter and Andrew, later left Jesus and went back to their hometown to pick up their old trade. James and John's mother, Salome, was the younger sister of Mary, Jesus' mother. So they were cousins. James and John's father Zebedee was from a wealthy family, and he was also on good terms with the high priest of the time. When Jesus started his ministry, he came to James and John. At that time, they were in a boat with their father, preparing their nets. Fishing nets were the main tools for fishermen. If a net was broken, fishes would slip away. The job of mending the nets required attentiveness and patience. When Jesus came to call them, they were mending the nets. Just like Peter and Andrew, James and John were initial followers of Jesus, and I believe that Jesus' words became seeds of life, growing slowly in them, so that. When Jesus came to them, verse twenty-two, they immediately left the boat and their father and followed Jesus. James and John's family was relatively wealthy, so that as soon as Jesus called them, they immediately left the boat and their father and followed Jesus. In the past year, preparing nets cultivated John's attentiveness and patience. John lived a long life thanks to God's special grace. After the martyrdom of his fellow disciples, he lived another thirty years. During John's later years, churches were already built, and heresy believers gradually permeated into churches. The ministry God gave to John was mending ministry. His job was to mend the broken areas and holes in the nets. His mending ministry was also completing his ministry, as he lived longer with a richer life experience. Therefore, the book of John he wrote became the last of four gospel books. First John, Second John, and Third John made up for what was lacking in the letters. Making it complete, the revelation he wrote became the last book in the New Testament, also the last book of the Bible. It completed God's words. John's special ministry was made through Jesus' calling of John and James, using Matthew's description of the net. We appreciate the conciseness of Matthew's choice of words. In the book of Matthew and his close observations, there was a description of this miracle about these four brothers following Jesus. In Luke chapter five, verses one through eleven, Peter, a very experienced fisherman, did not catch any fish after trying the whole night. When he was exhausted. Jesus asked him to put out the boat into deep water, and let down the nets for a catch. Peter did so reluctantly. A large number of fish was caught, and their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. The other boat should be the one belonging to James and John. After this miracle, Peter fell at Jesus' knees and said, "Go away from me, Lord! I am a sinful man." The four fishermen left their boats full of fish and followed Jesus. 
but Matthew chose not to include the details of this miracle by simply mentioning that when Peter followed Jesus, he was casting his nets. When John answered his calling, he was mending the nets. Peter and John's future ministries were decided with this one sentence. Continuing with verse twenty-three. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. After collecting several disciples, Jesus started preaching and teaching in public. The way Jesus preached was going throughout Galilee, to bring gospel to people in need. He not only preached as he was walking; he also taught in the synagogues. His message of the gospel was relatively simple. He was spreading seeds everywhere in great generosity. When people became responsive to the messages, his next step was to teach, allowing these seeds of life to grow gradually. He also spread the gospel from the kingdom of heaven. The gospel was about the kingdom of heaven, as he was the king. He came to look for people for the kingdom of heaven. At the same time, he healed every disease and sickness among the people. Verse twenty-four. News about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him. Uh, people brought to him. Um, were all ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, those having seizures and the paralyzed, and he healed them. He not only preached and taught people, but also satisfied all needs among the people. His reputation spread all over the region. Syria was to the north of Galilee. People who heard of his reputation in that region all came to him for help. People with internal and external diseases of various kinds, with pain, the demon possessed, people with spiritual and mental conditions, seizures, and the paralyzed, were all brought to Jesus, and he healed them all. Verse twenty-five. Large crowds from Galilee. The Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan followed him. When Jesus officially started his ministry, the gospel was open to the public, to all people. If you are willing, you were welcome to come. Large crowds of people from all the above mentioned areas came to follow Jesus. Although there was a huge crowd of people, Jesus was never interested in crowds or numbers of people surrounding him. He was only interested in people who truly wanted to follow him, and cared about only those who loved the Lord wholeheartedly, and want to follow God. Dear brothers and sisters, how long has it been since you were saved? How much growth from words of life do you see in yourself? If our Lord calls you today, can you leave everything behind and follow Him? What Jesus was preaching was gospel from the kingdom of heaven, not all benefits and peace on earth. If Jesus calls you today, are you ready? Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for granting me with the wisdom of salvation. When someone preaches the gospel to me, I'm willing to accept this gospel of grace. I pray for your mercy. Make me gradually see the ministry bestowed upon me after experiencing your grace. Help me listen to your words in every day of my life. To understand your will upon me, when you call me, I will be ready to leave everything behind and follow you. Bless my life. We pray in Jesus' name.